Welcome to Consciousness Chronicles. I am here with my lovely friend, Millie. My name is Linda, and we are here sharing our wit and wisdom with you about spiritual and non-spiritual subjects. Um, we usually pull them out of this magic jar, but today, I mean, we're running low, folks. We need some help here. Can you send yeah. us some ideas on what to talk about? So today, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, we are going to... We'll card, pick out of cards that give subject matter. So we'll just randomly pull them as we go through this time period with y'all. <laughs> I want to see the cards. Oh, neat. This one says, if there is an afterlife or reincarnation, what one memory from this life would you bring with you? To the next one. I love, you know, we really need a link to those cards below because I want to get those. Yeah. It's called reflection cards. Look. I love those. Okay. What reincarnation memory would I bring with me to my next life? Yeah. Being reunited with my lover. Ask me 10 years from now. I mean, I don't want to bring that home, but right now I do. <laughs> Wow, that's a hard one. It really is. Because I feel like I'm missing out on a bunch of other ones, too. <laughs> you know? But that's the one that randomly popped into my head. Well, so. I guess that's the one that's most important. I guess. Sorry, kids. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I have to agree. I would find him a lot earlier in my next one. Wouldn't that be fun? Well, maybe we'll get through all this karmic BS and then, I don't know, but we don't want to come back here. So maybe we'll just have to find them in the ethers and play out there. <laughs> you know what? I, I take that back. If I, I would like to have the memory of not, not being afraid. Like now at 56, as opposed to when I was in my teens and twenties and thirties. Mm -hmm. I want to have the memory that you can do anything and there's nothing stopping you, but yourself. That's a really good one. I mean, cause once you do that, then you can find your lover and, and yeah. you can find all your soul group because you know, you are an infinite being having this human experience. Yeah. I, I want to remember that you can do anything and yeah. everything the only thing and person stopping you is you. And if I remember that in the next life, I could do it from the very beginning. Because if I was like, I always think if I could transport myself back to being a teenager, I would own stocks and Microsoft and Yahoo and Google. <laughs> no, like I would literally change the trajectory of my life without changing the experiences, but make it a lot easier because I don't regret anything, but. God, I could have made it a lot easier on myself because I'm so hard headed. Do you know? So if you if you can take something with you, would be that lack of fear. Of mm -hmm. God, that would be perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and I hate the fact that we have to come here with so much amnesia. I'd like to yeah. come in with a little bit more knowledge, which which is a nod to what you just said because you would you would just live your life so differently really believing from the get go i'm an internal i'm an eternal being there's nothing you can do that will hurt yeah. me or yeah. there is no suffering that you can give me that i cannot overcome because i just know i just know i'm i'm good Okay. The other side of this card says, what is something you wanted for a long time, but once you acquired it, it didn't quite meet your expectation. Something, a physical something. It could be anything. Hmm. Wow. If you got one, go. Cause I don't, <laughs> I don't have one. You know, maybe, maybe some of, you know, the, okay. First thing that comes to mind for me is my murder house. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember murder house? Yeah, I you're telling me. About I bought this house, house when I first moved to Florida <laughs> and I'll try again to make a short story out of this. Um, 
I'm touring it. My family is up in Michigan. I'm down here at a new job. I'm trying to get two dogs, three kids and a husband into a place to live when school's out in two months. And it's the height of the market. And as soon as something comes on the market and it's halfway livable, it's gone. It's taken. So yeah. I had missed like dozens of houses at this point. So I get a call from my realtor at eight in the morning. I'm said, I'll be there. I'll be there in 20 minutes. Let's go. And I said, if this is halfway livable, it's our house. Well, I get in it and I tour it and it needs updating, but it's livable. It's very, it's moving ready to the point to where, yeah, you got to rip the carpet up. Yeah, you got to do some things. But for the most part, it's good for three messy kids and two messy dogs. Mm -hmm. So I'm touring the house. My family's up in Michigan. My ex is trusting me to make a decision. We had already actually put in on another house that didn't pass inspection. So he's a little apprehensive of what I'm doing. But um, I see this thing in the girl's room, this beautiful memorial to her father. And the first thing that crossed my mind is, oh, how sad. He must have died of cancer. Well, fast forward, everybody's moved in. Everybody knows the story. Dad died. Um, we don't know how dad died, but I'm believing it's of cancer. My husband's outside talking across the fence that got blown down by the hurricane the previous summer, the non-existent fence. Mm -hmm. And he said, he shouts out to me in the kitchen. Yeah, the dad died. And I'm like, well, as long as it didn't happen in this house, that's okay. And the neighbor heard me and he shut up and changed the subject. And that immediately sent up a red flag for me. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. So we still didn't have internet in the house. We had just moved in. I go to work the next day and I Google the, the guy's name and death. And I get this whole Google list of murder, of the murder of this guy, which happened in the house, which happened by a young man that they allowed into the house. And then they found out the young man was having relations with the young girl and was kicked out of the house. And the young man knew where dad's gun safe was. And it, it could be a made for TV movie. It could be a 48 hours. It could be all that. And I just sat there going. How long did you live in that house? Oh, a long time. Did you clear um, all that energy out? Well, yes and no. The thing that made me finally come to peace with it, because I didn't sleep for days after that. Oh. I was a mess. I yeah. bitched out my realtor. Well, if it's not suicide, they don't need to disclose it in Florida. So ask your questions to your yeah. due diligence. Yeah. 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 But the thing that brought me peace about it was I finally found an article about the mother and daughter saying, we have too many memories with him in this house. We are not going to be chased out of here. And they chose to live there another four and a half years until they sold it when the daughter graduated. So they actually, they actually did the healing. They did the healing and they did the clearing, but yeah. you know, the guy's name was Richard and he, he would show up. He mm -hmm. would show up not in the physical for me, but I would feel his energy. Mm -hmm. I never told my kids because I knew if I did, we would never be allowed to leave the house without them. <laughs> or they yeah. were standing out in the yard going, I'm not staying in that house. <laughs> so my daughter would pick up on things all the time. My son, my oldest son picked up on a few things. The dogs would stand and stare at the corner of the room. It, it was just like, Okay, Richard was standing next to me one morning, uh, Thanksgiving morning, when I was cleaning the turkey in the sink. I just said, hi, Richard. And then I stopped and I'm like, okay, he's here. Mm -hmm. um, my ex-husband would see him walk across the screen porch in the back. Uh, Greg wow. was there the last couple of years. He thought my ex-husband was breaking in one night because he saw somebody in that back screen porch. So Richard's signature, energy signature was there. It was still there, yeah. Something. I don't, because the previous owners had them send him to the light, wherever. They had somebody come in, cleared it all. 
I then had somebody come in and do the same thing because I kept seeing him and Greg kept seeing him. And I'm like, this isn't fair to him. He doesn't need to be here. So I don't know if that ever happened right. or if it was just, I have heard there are energetic signatures, like the repetitive walking through the porch, that could just be a tape being played, energy right. tape, kind mm -hmm. of. That's the best way I know how to describe it. But the spot, I bet I can tell you the spot where it happened because I stood there barefoot once and all this and you felt it energy came coming up through my whole physical body and I'm getting chills right now. So I guess I did know that, but I was a realtor for a while. So I that would go hard. back and not buy that house. I wouldn't be in a hurry to feel like I had to get everybody in there. I would have found a place to just rent and take in my time because you know what? Six months later, the market crashed and I had a house that needed repairs that was overpriced and I ended up doing a short sale on it years later, years later. What was the question? Because I'm... <laughs> well, what, what, what would you go back and change or something like that? Is that what it was? Uh, yeah, something like that. What would something you about what what would you not oh what would you not like do buy again or do have it? again or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Or oh no no no. It was <laughs> here, here's some ladies, old ladies, try to remember things. Um what what have you what did you purchase that you regretted after you got it? Something like that. Mm -hmm. Have any regrets? I don't think I have any regrets. Even the worst things I've done it, did it. I don't. I don't think I have any regrets. I have. I have two more. You pick which one you want. I like this one, and I want you to answer it. Oh no! I just what what message would you put on a billboard for thousands of people to see every day? You are enough. Yes. And that just came into my head. So That's that was channeled. <laughs> yeah. You are enough. You are That's enough. What the guys want you to know. You are enough. What would you put? Don't postpone joy. Mm, so good. Both of those. So good. Um, what is the biggest risk you've taken? If you had another chance, would you do anything differently? Ooh. You go. Leave my ex-husband. The last one. Mm -hmm. That was a huge risk. <clears throat> what would you do different? I don't know. I go back and I try to figure out. Um, bless his heart. He doesn't have the capacity to hear the reasons why. So I think I would probably would have been more honest with myself and him along the way instead of just shockingly ask for a divorce and not know why I left him that was a huge risk and I it shifted my life in such a way that no other and nothing before that or anything after could possibly have come to um to even come near it um and yet in spite of all that it was the most outstanding relationship that I've ever had because it opened me up for the first time for me to trust in me and the messages that I would get, I was getting and in my guides. It actually, I couldn't lean on anybody else. I had to lean on me and spirit. Mm. And when you go through something that, that huge, and the only thing you can trust is what you know, and you can't explain it because there's no way of explaining how I knew what I knew. Um, 
I feel that that was the biggest risk. It was the biggest risk I've ever taken because it meant my life. And I don't know if I would ever even, I don't think I would ever even change it. Um, I don't think I would do anything different, but actually honor what I knew and how I knew it and not wait so long to do it. That's the, probably the, where I would, because this particular human being has challenged me emotionally, physically, and spiritually. And I'm so grateful for his presence in my life. I can't imagine having had a better teacher of all the experiences that I've ever had. And I've had some, you know, challenging ones that was the biggest risk I have ever taken. Knowing what I, <clears throat> what I knew and sitting on it for years and knowing that I could have done something, obviously I couldn't at the time. It's powerful. It changed me. Like it still changes me. It still, it still goes through my body. It's still in my DNA after all these years. It's still there. And in spite of doing all the work and all the healing, as we always talk, there's still that incredible understanding that I picked this particular lesson in my life with this particular person. It doesn't happen randomly. It happens because you make a, I mean, I, this is my belief. You make a contract and you say, I'm going to live in the dead man's house just so I can experience, you know what I mean? Like we have experiences that we go, that wasn't random. Yeah. We pick those experiences. It's a risk. Life is a risk. The minute that you take your first breath coming out of the womb, you know what? Life is a risk. Everything else is just, you know, I think that would, I, I don't think I would do anything differently other than not wait so long, but there were lessons of all the things I've ever done. Like, that was definitely the most challenging. You want another question? What about you? Um, I'm probably leaving my ex the second time because yeah. I married him twice. <laughs> and that was risky too, the second marriage <laughs> and then the leaving. Um no, and I can't say I would have done it differently and not done that because then that would mean my third son wouldn't have been born. Right. Um, but maybe I would have approached that marriage differently. Maybe I would have been less giving and more setting of boundaries and saying, you know, if we're going to do this, we got to agree on X, Y, and Z, or it's not going to work. But then again, my second son wouldn't have been more, I wouldn't have learned all the lessons that I learned. So it, it's, that's, that's really a hard one. I mean, I took a risk in ordering like 500 Oracle decks. I know <laughs> my own money. <laughs> so, but it's got actually going to do really well. Spare bedroom too it's going to, it's going to do very, very well. All right. I have right. one last one yeah. here. Okay. Go for it, girl. If you could pick any career path and you were guaranteed to be successful, what would you choose? Ooh. I know mine. <laughs> I would probably want to be a writer also. Like you. But no, but not the edible soul. I don't know. Yeah. Mine would be um do you hear all, do you hear my room? Do you hear the noises in my room here? It's expanding. I mean, as soon as we started talking about this, it's like, there's all this all over the room. Um, I don't, it wasn't food critic. Like I wouldn't have, I probably would have gone down that route. I should have started blogging 20 years ago about food. Um, I know that passion of how food is created, what it, what it constitutes to break bread with people. Johnny Depp was asked by Oprah Winfrey many, 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 many years, decades ago. And I'll never forget. I was, I was sitting there at four o'clock watching her show or three o'clock. And she asked them, Johnny, if you weren't a 
you know, make a superstar, what would you, what would, what would be your job? And without hesitating, he goes, I'd be a hat maker. <laughs> I was like, oh, Did I hear right. I would, and you know, he always wears hats. <laughs> he would be a hat maker. And so you never, he would be a hat maker. And I thought to myself, without skipping a beat, I said out loud to myself, oh, I've been a food critic or a food blogger. I would travel all over the world and I would have just connected with people from all walks of life to find out. And this is back 20 years, 30 years ago. So for the edible soul to now be front and center and me trying to, it's actually what I was probably put here to do. And I didn't do it in the first round, you know, like it's, what would you do? You said writer. What yeah, kind of, I'd probably what, write, what kind of more, writer? write more sooner. I don't know. I it's it's always been my my place of healing when I was younger and I was going through younger girl angst and all of that. I would write poems and prose and mm -hmm. all these beautiful thoughts and feelings. Um, you know, writing. Writing, I think, is actually in my DNA because my dad's regret was never being, he wanted to be, um, write detective stories. Yeah, I found that out from my brother a couple of years ago and I go, that's interesting. And my brother started a publication. So, you know, he was in, into that field as well. Wow. And when I was producing, I was doing a lot of writing as well. So. I don't know. Probably writing, but I can't I can't really just say, gosh, I wish I would have just full on gone to that because I got bits and pieces of it along the way. And now I'm starting to do it more. So I did my book. You're an amazing writer. I mean, you're an amazing writer. My mother, my mother, no one, my dear, my mother on her last week on here, she was very sick and I was living in Orlando and I brought her back down to South Florida to be with my sisters on the way down she she was very vulnerable my mother was not a, somebody who was very vulnerable and there was a few things that I got from that three and a half hour drive that I'll never forget and that was back in 2008 she said to me what do you think happens when you die I said well you go to a better place than here well what if I don't you will but what if I don't <laughs> I said you will you you will I, I I don't know how I know this but you will and she said she asked me to make her a few promises to which one I didn't make I said I'm not making you that promise but I, I will promise that I finish my degree I was I was getting my bachelor's in psychology and she said you know my biggest regret is what I did for a living and my mother had never told me this and she was 83 years old my mother had wanted to be a violinist it took her the week before she died to let anyone know that she studied violin, but she got married at 16. She had already been in college because she was brilliant. She had a super high IQ. And so they skipped her a whole bunch of times. And she was already in her second year of college at 16 and she got married and she was studying music and she never became a violinist. <laughs> like that was so far out of like my reach of understanding. Cause my mother, I mean, she had, she had music ability. She played the piano. She played the, the, the organ. We had an organ in the house and, but violinist. And you never know, like in her mind, she missed her calling of being a violinist. And I'm like, mm -hmm. and to this day now, so many years later, 16 years later, when I hear anything with violin, I get all like, just combobulated. I start thinking of my mother and the fact that she didn't become a violinist. So it was too late for her. But it's not too late if you're still breathing to follow that dream or that second. It's not too late for you to write. It's not too late for too late for me to, you know, do a show on how food connects to all of us spiritually and emotionally and physically. It's not too late to do the things that we have dreamt about because and as long as you have breath in you or health, you can do it. I mean, it might not happen overnight, but don't wait till your last breath to go, Oh, I should have, could have, you know, would have. I see a lot of people doing that now as they get into their later stages. 
of this. Yeah. My husband yeah. didn't have a pilot till he was six. I know. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine posted that she didn't become a nurse till she was like 48. You know, wow. you can do these things whenever you want. There's no timetable on it. If you have the passion to explore it, you go and do it. Just do it. The last thing I want to say is this is this is a funny story. I was with a whole bunch of friends and her mother is in her late 70s. And she said she met this woman recently. This is a few years ago. She was at dinner table telling me the story. She met this woman who was in her 80s and at a doctor's office and the woman said oh yeah i'm in the process of getting a divorce and she's very proud of herself for saying i'm in the process of getting a divorce and so my friend maria said Honey, how long have you been married and i was like a whole bunch of decades he goes what's the point of getting divorced what's the point of getting a divorce i don't want to spend another day with this man for the rest of my life i have <laughs> dreams i need to follow she did she got a divorce they became friends and anyway so it's never too late to do the things you think you've had to do and change it to the things that you want to do because a hundred percent love it all right that i can't fun. thank you enough this was fun yeah this is really <laughs> we'll have to mix this in again I, I like this it. is this is a lot of the, the box the reflection cards now they have a ton of them i have I've given a bunch away because I get them and then and then I have too many of the same. So then I give them for presents. But I have one about relationships. It's questions for your partner. Ooh. And it's basically, I'm not, I mean, they're not like, it's not kinky. It's actually questions oh, about, <laughs> questions about dreams and things that you want and what are you looking for in a relationship or, and it's great, you know, to just, pick random and ask the and there's two on each um thing so yeah i like it i like it very nice thank you my dear what a wonderful idea i love you i love you guys bye everybody